when do I tend to hop onto another private part? When do I tend to uh, habitually lie, habitually steal? Um, is it when I feel like I'm gonna lose in control? Why do I feel the need to uh, gain control? Why am I trying to control somebody else when I live in my own skin? And the only individual that I'm ultimately responsible for developing healthy control over is myself. Why am I trying to control someone else? Um, why am I looking for someone to quick fix through when it's my ultimate responsibility, evidently, to remain proactive about my own life and my own priceless existence? Why do I feel the need to control? Is that love? Is that healthy? Is that, has that been helping me? And if not, then why do I continue to engage in those habitual and healthy habits? And why do I continue to cling to a particular person? When do I particularly tend to contact that individual? Why do I feel a need to gain and obtain so much things from this individual? Are they responsible for me? Then why do I continue to try to manipulate? Why am I trying to get someone to do the work that I evidently need to do within myself in order to experience more long-term results? You see, people can support us. We can support each other if we would like, but ultimately all the support and love in the world is gonna go but so far. If we do not continuously embrace that and continuously work on that, then that support and love goes but so far. You cannot heal someone's mental illness. You cannot make someone for them. The only way they can improve or you can improve or we can improve is evidently, evidence keeps showing us this, life keeps showing us, us, us this, if we are continuously embracing healthy accountability or our part in our matter and our part, because we can't control what people do to us. We can't control what people decide to do or what happens to us, unforeseen things can happen. However, we can control how we move forward. We can control whether we're gonna allow that to make or break us. We can control whether we're gonna just sit there and lay in it unhealthily and the change is absolutely nothing. We can decide whether we're gonna be consistent about therapy. We can decide whether we're gonna be consistent about counseling. We can decide whether we're gonna look up these uh, life coaches online and learn from that. We can decide whether we're gonna engage in the deep breathing, the lit it pace walking, uh, reciting of uplifting scriptures and affirmations, post um, hopeful scriptures, clean up our space so that we don't feel overwhelmed and lay in our depression. We can decide whether we're gonna to continue to take those supplements that are evidently helping and continue to go to different doctors until we find the right one that can help regulate us. We can decide whether we're going to control our spending habits, turn off the, the, the TV if we have to, turn off the, the the social media if we have to, uh, we can take that card, that credit card and tear it up if we know we can't control ourselves. And we can control, we can have control over that. We can, if we continuously work on it, we can develop and get stronger. At first it's gonna be a challenge when we're lifting weights. It's not gonna be like, oh, we go from six pound weights and we're gonna to jump to 20 pound weights. It's a progression. When you continue to work on it, when you continue to practice it, we get stronger and move on to the next level and progress more to on to the next page of our life. It is possible. And Yahweh knows despite our flaws and all and our perfections that we all have, we all have strengths and needs of improvement. We all, even in those strengths, we all evidently need to continuously work on those strengths to continue to maintain the strength and to continuously be open to explore the areas that we may have more of a challenge in. I had more of a challenge of continuously placing those healthy boundaries and continuously not enabling people because I allowed the empathy in me to override the fact that you're not really helping people by enabling them. You're helping them to remain complacent. You're helping them to not remain consistent about counseling. You're helping them to remain a binge eater. You're providing the food for them to multiply their health problems. It's not helping them. 
you're helping them to habitually lie and have you as a continuous punching bag instead of addressing the pain in them and remaining consistent about once again counseling and some type of form of therapy. And there's so many different re free resources online, uh, life coaching online. You're you're uh, you're helping them to, to to supply them with what they want to get to quick fix them from the work it takes to experience more long-term results. Yes, they may not realize that they have a challenge. They may not want to admit that. It may be just easier to lie on you and see you as a, a cruel, whorish, molester, whatever they've fabricated in their mind. But it's not helping them by allowing you to remain a punching bag, allowing you to remain a quick fix to what will keep them stunted. Everyone deserves better than that. And once you understand why you're stepping away and why Yahweh allowed you to step away to someone else who's truly exhibiting to be ready for those healthy changes, you know you're not doing it out of cruelty. You know you're not doing it because you feel like you're better than them, more righteous than them, more smarter than them. Too good. You don't think you're too good for anyone. You're doing that because you know that what you were doing it for, to help them wasn't really helping them. It was regressing them. And even though you may and know you've met well and you want the best for another priceless miracle, you connecting with them was bringing you both down. It was keeping you both stuck. And it was keeping you in, stunted in the area where you needed to work on. And it was keeping them stunted in the areas they needed to work on. And it wasn't aligning because they're not ready. And you're still healing, and they're still healing, and they're not ready. That's what the evidence kept showing. They can tell you all they wanted to, but actions speak louder than any word someone can convey. So it's very essential to believe the habitual evidence Yahweh keeps showing you. Because if somebody's ready, they don't just want it from a particular person. They want it, they'll take it from anybody. They'll put in the work it takes, just like if they want a job, just like if they want a drink, just like if they want anything that they desire. They're going to do whatever they can to take it or to get it or to earn it. That's the key, earn it. The point is, when somebody is not truly ready, then the actions will not align. Faith without works is dead. Wholehearted prayers without continuous action will not eventually foster satisfaction and you will stay stuck because you're not habitually putting in the work it takes. Your prayers are not aligning with your habitual actions. So please, we cannot continue to complain to Yahweh and point fingers when we're continuously jumping into another private every time we have a challenge. We're continuously lying on people and fabricating and allowing our mania and our brains to take over what Yahweh is showing us. We're not taking the time to read the scriptures on a daily basis. We're not taking the time to apply the scriptures on a daily basis. But we're expecting Yahweh to drop all these things in our life. But our life is not aligning with what Yahweh is revealing to us in order to shift us to the next page in our life. How can we complain? How can we continue to complain when we keep doing the same things? It's insanity to expect that. It truly is. You can expect genuine love by jumping from private to private. I don't care if you waited a year or two, four or five years to got to the next private. How were you doing it? Are you in a committed relationship? Why do you keep having, you know, producing lives out of wedlock? Why do you continue to jump from person to person when you know that there has not produced anything but confusion and broken hearts? Why do you continue to puff, 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 overly puff, 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 and swift and drink? When you know <coughs> that has done nothing but multiply your mental and emotional health challenges and has depleted from your pocket, you cannot afford another drink. If you save up every dollar you spend on a beer and every dollar you spend on a cigar or weed stick, and I'm not saying drinking is totally bad and some herbs Yahweh created for us to boil and heal certain mania and pain, but when you're overdoing anything, if you're over be drinking and eating and binge this, binge that, and going to the casino, and then you're looking to somebody to be your hero, your quick fix, like your maxi pad to suck up all the blood, your bandage to suck all the, uh, the, the, the juices and the, the germs. You're looking for that quick fix. 
you're not going to receive evidently long-term results by doing that. So why do you keep doing it? Why do you keep looking to someone to be that? Oh, you keep going to the same person who's exhibiting not to align with you. And you're like, oh, complaining to the person, dumping on them and dumping on them like a big garbage dump. But you keep doing the same things, expecting different results. You continue to not pick up the scriptures, but you can put your hand on a remote. You continue to drop to privates, but you're barely praying to Yahweh through Jesus Christ above. You continue to complain, but what are you really doing for Yahweh to bless? You continue to lie and fabricate and self-assume and spread the self-assumptions, but you can't explain why you're losing more and more friends. You have a bunch of people around you that are not really genuine, but you are fostering a disingenuous life, but you're expecting genuineness. You are acting and behaving habitually like you want a butterfly, but you're not being a butterfly. So why? Why continue to complain? And why continue to enable someone to habitually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually abuse you? That is not going to help them to love you, Yahweh, and that's not going to help you to love yourself. It's only going to deplete from them. In essence, they're going to continue to blame you for find another way you didn't measure up. And it's going to continue to make your self-esteem feel like the ground and continue to disconnect you with Yahweh above. It's not a solution. Remember, habitually enabling abuse of any kind, accepting abuse of any kind, does not heal you or another person. And habitually exerting any type of abuse, whether that's mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual abuse, is not going to help you get blessed from the ones above or have you truly be feel loved or be loved. You're going to continuously be in confusion, frustrations, because you're trying to control someone or something that is not in your power or your right to control. You are in control of yourself. Get control over you. You live in your skin. You live in your temple. You live in your body. Get control over you instead of trying to get control over someone else. Don't allow these habits to control you. You control it. And yes, it's a battle. We're human. We have feelings. We have desire to be loved and to love. We have, sometimes we have things creep up on us and we're like, where's this thought coming from? But it is possible to continuously overcome it. It's up to us to continuously want to do it. And if we know those habits and have done nothing but deplete, wound, add salt to the wounds, then why continue to enable it? Why continue to try to manipulate someone to enable it? Two plus two will always be four. You're not going to outright evidence. We, I, you, anybody else is no exception to the rule. Okay, so if you want better, you got to be better. If you want to heal, then put in the work. And if you want to be with people who are healing and they look like they're progressing, then you got to progress and heal and put in the work too because they're putting in the work evidently. What about you? Much love, everyone. And not everything that you think and that you heard and that you saw even is always accurate. Please continue to pray. And wholehearted prayers, continuous wholehearted prayers to Yahweh, Jah Jehovah, through Christ Jesus, Yahshua, above the heavens. Continue to pray over the evidence, whatever Yahweh is revealing to you, and believe what Yahweh is showing you. Don't try to make Yahweh a liar. Yahweh has proven to be accurate, true, and reliable. And if you continue to want to walk in darkness, that's on you. If you want to continue to foster and add on to your own traumas and hurt and wounds, that's on you. But don't expect someone to sit there and drag themselves down with you continuously because Yahweh graced, with them, graced them with life. You didn't. You're not the originator of life. Yahweh is. And Yahweh blessed every single one of us with life. It's up to us to do something and appreciate it. It's up to us. It's not somebody's job to treat you like you're more important than them and to treat you like you're more important than Yahweh and what Yahweh graced them with. It's not, it's not that. No, thank you. Much love to every priceless existence out there. This is not to forever shame or blame. This is what I was led to share and continuous wholehearted prayers and supplications and my flaws and all. 
Yes, we can. Continue to rise and catch yourself by surprise. To be continued. Take care.